OK, then, I'm going to show you uh, a few different things. Um, we're going to start off with some soft tissue techniques and then some stretches. And you want to do the soft tissue techniques uh, first. Now, don't get too alarmed, but these are the implements that you're going to need. You need some kind of metal pipe, and it needs to be a pipe that won't bend when you use it because you're going to be working it through your calves and your hamstrings and so on. So thin, flimsy copper piping is no good because if it bends, it's useless to you. This is uh, aluminium with a, a wall thickness of about three millimeters. Um, but basically, any uh, could be steel, could be brass, copper, aluminium. But just make sure it's solid and it isn't going to bend. So you'll need that. Make sure it's smooth too, because if it's not smooth, it'll rip your skin up. Um, and then you're also going to need a wrench. I don't care what size the ends are, but you're going to use the shaft. Again, we're going to be using it to, to pull lines through the calves and the hamstrings, the quads, the IT bands, things like that. And the wrench is particularly good because once you've warmed the area up with something like this, which is round and smooth, then you can use a wrench that has a much more of a uh, defined edge. It's not sharp, but it's got a much more penetrating edge. And you will quickly realize that to get the worst lumps out, especially for you around that, um, that inside of that right knee where they took tissue for that ACL repair, it's going to require something like this to, to break up the scar tissue that you still have there. And there's not a human being on the planet that's going to be able to do that. Um, with their fingers as effectively as what you can do yourself with these tools. So um, don't try and tell me you can get a massage therapist to do it because trust me, you won't, I guarantee it. Not unless he's a 350 pound um, professional strongman who sees one patient a day. That's literally what it would take to, to do what I have in mind. So get yourself these tools, they're easy to, to get. You can get any hardware store will have these. Okay, so here's what you're gonna do. And you need to do this procedure on all your running days before you run. Okay, so first of all, we're going to start in the calves. So, the best way to do this is to sit on something. All right, we're going to go through the calves first. You take your pipe nice and smooth, um, push into the calves and slide down slowly. And notice I'm only doing a few inches at a time, maybe three to four inches to start with. I'm not rushing the stroke. And notice also that I'm changing the angle. So I'm doing some strokes to get this edge, a few strokes to get this edge, and some strokes to go all the way down the center. And I am pushing into my leg before I start to glide down. Like so, nice and smooth. If you find that the, um, the metal doesn't slide on the skin, then you can put a little bit of uh, coconut oil or um, uh, maybe even some Vaseline or something like that just to give it a little bit of lube. But you, it's better to do it dry because if you put lube on the skin, usually it, it reduces the amount of friction. And friction is what you need to make this work. You need friction and heat to make the fascia, the connective tissue, creep. Um, if you cover yourself in lube, it's almost pointless. You may as well go to a spa and get a nice fluffy massage. It's just not going to do anything. So you want to go dry if you can. Then you do the other leg. You always do both legs. Never ever treat just one leg. That's a really bad idea. And notice I'm only doing about eight to ten strokes at a time. Notice I'm not rushing the strokes. I'm changing the angle pretty much every stroke I do. And so it's brief treatments, and you go back to the left leg. And now I'm going to start to lengthen my strokes and extend down the leg a little further. So now I'm doing about seven, eight, nine inches or so. That one kind of slipped. Sometimes you'll need to open the angle of the knee up a little bit in order to get a stroke that feels like it's smooth. See, that's a lot better now. I don't feel like it's jumping. You don't want to feel like the bar is skipping. All right, then I do a bunch on the other leg, same thing. The only difference now is I'm going longer down the leg. Nice, smooth, deep strokes. Okay. Now, eventually, once you've done this for a week or so, 
This round smooth pipe will get too easy, so you'll have to start using your wrench. I'm not going to demonstrate that, but it's well, maybe I'll show you real quick just so you know what it takes to use. Um, it's basically the same thing, but you're going to use the sharp edge here, not the flat edge. So you get the thin edge of the handle into the leg, and as soon as I do that, I can feel that that's a lot more invasive. I, I use these things all the time on all parts, different parts of my legs. Um, so for me, it really doesn't feel like the metal round pipe does anything. Um, this is much more effective. You can feel it's really getting in there. You can feel all kinds of cracks and pops as you run over little irregularities in the soft tissue. So you progress to that after about a week or so with the pipe. And usually the first few strokes I do with the pipe anyway as a warm up and then I progress to the bar. Okay, so anyway, you do each leg two or three times, eight to 10 strokes, and then you want to stretch your calf. So a good way to do this is to get something, let me find something suitable. You know, we may be hard pushed in here. But basically, this kind of thing is almost useless. This really does not produce very much of a stretch. The equipment I use is actually outside on the back deck, but I can't move this camera, so we're stuck with this location. But really what you need is a ramp, like a wooden ramp, angled like so, that you can then put your foot on and stand on with one leg completely off the ground and stretch like that. So you just want a piece of wood that will angle like so. Not one of those rocker boards, the, the little plastic things that rock back and forth, they don't work well either. And then you do your calf stretch, hold it for at least two minutes once on each leg. You do that after the uh, massage work that I just showed you. Okay, um, now let's talk about your hamstrings. So again, you're going to start with the, the pipe, very straightforward, and you're basically going to do your own form of active release. So you start right in the crease at the back of the knee, the popliteal crease, start dragging the pipe up the thigh, and then as you do that, open up the knee. So now half the stroke comes from you pulling the pipe up the leg, and half the stroke comes from you extending the knee. So there we go, and just treat like three or four inches to start with, and then change the angle like so, so you get the outside of the hamstring a little more. Good just three or four inches at a time. So you start the stroke by pulling the pipe, and then once the pipe's moving, then you open the knee up. That way you get enough tension on the soft tissue that you'll actually get some change in the fascia. Fascia is incredibly strong. Um, it, depending on which books you read, some, some people are of the opinion that the tensile strength of fascia is actually greater than bone. That's why it takes such um, industrial looking techniques to get anything to happen in your connective tissue. And then we do the other leg, changing the uh, exact location on the back of the thigh as we go. This one's going to be at the inside. And again, you don't want to do more than about six to eight strokes at a time before you switch legs. So then you go back and do the right leg again and then the left leg again. And uh, now you start to extend the stroke up the leg a little further. So Previously, I started at the back of the knee and worked up to about here. Now I'm going to start two or three inches um, above the knee and then work a little further up. So I'm kind of overlapping with the stroke I did last time, but finishing a lot further up the thigh, like so. Go. Start, really important that you start dragging the pipe first before you start opening the knee up. Once the pipe's moving, then you open the knee up. Otherwise, the technique's just too weak. And you should work up to at least about here. You could go all the way up to your butt in here, but because the active release is coming by virtue of knee movement, as you move further and further up the thigh, there's less and less movement of the skin and the soft tissue as a result of the knee opening. In other words, down here, there's more movement than up here. So once you get to about two thirds of the way up the thigh, you won't really feel like the, the knee movement has much relevance anymore. Okay, so again, we started in the back of the knee before. So now I'm gonna start three or four inches further up the thigh than that. I start dragging and then I go with my leg movement. 
change the angle to get the outside, and so on. Now get the inside. So you're trading about that much, somewhere between that and about that. And if you find spots that are particularly painful, you can spend two or three strokes just focusing on a tiny section of half an inch to an inch at a time. Now, again, uh, once this gets easy, in a week or two, you can start using the wrench instead. Um, I recommend using this once as a warm-up, and then when you return to the, to the first leg the second time around, then go to the, the wrench. And uh, one other thing I should point out, don't let this rotate in your hands. A lot of people will say, oh, I use foam rollers, I use the stick. Forget it. Hopeless. that They won't do a damn thing with what you've got going on in your body. That For athletes that put a lot of stress in their body, you need friction and heat and glide on the skin. So if you let this thing roll up your leg like that as you open the knee, not, it's not going to do anything. You could do that every day for three years and it won't change anything. So don't let someone talk you into buying one of those plastic sticks with the rolling pieces on and you just kind of rub up and down the back of the leg or rolling around on a foam roll, it won't do anything. Nothing at all. It, it, you've got to keep hold the implement still and you have to create friction and heat and pain on the skin. Um, not so much pain that you rip the skin up, but it's got to be fairly uncomfortable, otherwise you're not going to get any changes at all. And whoever does your massage therapy, you should ask them to focus on these areas using their forearms and go with no lube, go dry, or a minimal amount of lube, and then once they've warmed the area up, rub the lube off completely so it's completely dry. Um, but if they're currently slapping lube all over you, every time you get worked on, forget it. It's, it's a waste of time. Okay, now, once you've done that, you need to stretch your hamstrings. Um, lots of ways to do this. I'll show you a couple of ways you should do both of these. And remember, you're doing all of this before you go running. Okay. So, one, it's very basic, like so. Get the front leg forwards, bend the thigh over the front leg, and then lengthen the spine, so send the top of the head in that direction, like that. And as you do that, you'll feel it stretch a lot more down the back of this left leg, like so. This leg should go back, but don't send this leg back so far that you feel a lot of stretch in here. It's about getting a hamstring stretch, so it's more important to send the front foot forwards. Hold that for a minute, and then switch legs. Wriggle the front foot forwards, and again, very important, lengthen your spine. Most people do these stretches, and they're all rounded over like a turtle. It's not going to do you any good. Um, you've got to lengthen the spine like that, and then you'll understand why it becomes difficult to stand up straight if you've got tight tissue in your legs. Because when you do that, you'll feel it pull through here a lot more. This is one of the reasons why you find it hard to run upright at the moment, because of what's going on in your legs. It actually affects your upper body posture and your spinal posture. So lengthen out that way. Like someone's taken your head and pulled it that way. So you do a minute on each leg, and then the next one looks like this. So it's here. And this is probably a reasonable height for you to start with, um, although fairly soon you'll need something a bit higher than this. One leg goes straight up. Make sure the bottom foot's pointing straight ahead. And then um, dorsiflex this ankle. That means you pull the toes up towards the shin. You make the whole ankle move like that. Get nice and tall, and then push the arms overhead. Lengthen through the spine. And I'm pushing this heel into the ground, and I'm lengthening up through the rest of my body. And my arms are actually like that. So my wrist is, and fingers are extended, and I'm pushing through the heels of my hands to the ceiling, squeezing the biceps into the side of the head. I know you can't see that. Um, when I'm up like this, but that's what my arms are doing. So, lengthening through the whole body, pushing the right heel into the floor, lengthening through the spine, sending the top of the head to the ceiling. The same things you work on, or will be working on when you run. Lock this knee, and dorsiflex that ankle. And that will be quite uncomfortable. You'll get a strong, stinging, burning stretch all the way along the back of the leg, back of the knee into the calf. Do that for one minute, and then 
swap over, same thing. Again, this foot cannot be like this. It must point directly forwards. My hips are square, facing to the front. There's no rotation of the pelvis. Get real tall. Squeeze the upper arms into the side of the head. Dorsiflex the right ankle. Lock the knee and lengthen the spine. And the more you lengthen the spine like this, the more stretch you'll feel. So you do both of those for a minute on each leg. Um, okay, a couple more things. You need a quad stretch. This is actually more of a rectus femoris stretch, but rectus femoris is one of your quads, so um, it doesn't really matter how you think of it, you need this stretch. Okay, so get your knee about 12 inches from the wall, don't go any closer than that, somewhere, somewhere between 12 and 18 inches. If you go closer, it won't help you, you'll actually be a lot worse off because you won't be able to get anything like the correct body position. Right angle at this knee, this foot is directly in front of that hip. Get nice and vertical, again, extend the wrist and fingers, so I'm doing that with my wrist and fingers, I'm pushing through the heels of my hands up to the sky, squeezing the biceps into the side of the head, lengthen through the spine, keeping the chin tucked and the head back. I push my left knee into the floor, so again I'm doing this through my whole body, starting from that kneecap out through the top of the head and out through the heels of the hands. Hold that, you do that for 30 seconds, then switch, make sure you have the next knee the same distance from the wall as the first one, otherwise you will not be able to get any legitimate sense of comparison between the two legs. Here's my right angle, I'm facing that way, nice and tall, push the right kneecap down into the floor, lengthen through the spine, I keep my chin tucked and my head retracted, which means I'm gliding back that way with my head as I push the heels of the hands, and the top of the head here goes to the sky. Push, 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 push. 30 seconds, and then you repeat that a second time. So 30 seconds on the left, 30 seconds on the right. So that's three stretches so far. Um, we did hamstrings, calves, hip flexors. Uh, yeah, we'll do one more for the psoas, which is also a hip flexor. And then you're good to go running. Okay, so. Grab hold of something or you can lean on a wall, get a nice long stride, lengthen the spine so the top of the head goes that way, straighten the back leg by pushing that rear knee in that direction and then press the pelvis forwards and down, still keeping that lengthening going on through the spine. You do not want to be like this, it doesn't do you any good at all. You've got to make the connections between the fascia in your legs and your upper body and stretch the entire fascial complex. It's no good isolating everything into the legs. You've got to get the upper body and the spine involved. And then you'll change the way you run your body alignment, your posture when you run much faster if you work on these aspects while you're stretching your legs. Okay, so again, lengthen through the spine, pelvis goes that way, top of the head goes that way. Push the left knee backwards so it's as straight as you can get it and then drive the pelvis forwards and down. So my pelvis is going that way. But I also have this going on through my whole spine. 30 seconds on each leg, and then switch, and do 30 seconds a second time on each leg. So it's left, right, left, right for 30 seconds. You do all of that before you run. Now you can repeat some of it, or all of it, if you want afterwards, but I promise you, your body will work a lot better and you'll have a much easier time getting your body upright. And this issue that you have with the tension at the back of the knee and the scar tissue from where they harvested that tissue, that will resolve a lot faster if you start working on these things now. Okay, so that's that whole palaver needs to be done before you run. It should be about a 20 minute um, preparation, something like that. All right, let me know if you've got questions.